Okay, I just want to say a few things about the, the readings to get you started. I probably won't do this type of lecture every module, um, but you should consult with the reading questions that I have for um, the four selections in Chapter 1 of the textbook. Um, and so um, for the first reading, Harrelson, Stevens, and Calloway, and yes, that's me, um, this is a uh, writing on what are human rights, which will help you with the definitional questions about um, what are human rights and what are the different types of rights. Um, and so on page five, there is a, a discussion about what human rights are, quoting Donnelly. And so you should be fairly familiar with what Donnelly's definition is. And then ask yourself, is this a definition that you like? Why aren't, why not? And how might you, in, you know, have a different definition of rights? Because after all, there is not a consensus on a definition of, of human rights. Um, also, uh, within this reading, there is a discussion that I touched upon uh, in the first lecture about these different typologies. So what are first generation rights? What are second generation rights? What are positive and negative rights? And so here is, again, some um, additional places to go and see some of this um, information for you to fill in the notes and compare to the lecture um, and the PDFs that I have posted for you. So you should be able to differentiate between political rights, security rights, and then subsistence rights, which I didn't talk about very much, but in those terms that we think of political rights again as those political and civil rights all lumped into one category. Security rights refers to uh, personal integrity rights is another way to describe that and refers to the, the security of the person. So if your security rights are violated then you're likely to have uh, violations that deal with torture and disappearances, um, uh, arbitrary arrest, things of that nature. And then subsistence rights are more in line with the social, economic, and cultural rights. These are the types, of, particularly economic rights, the types of things that are required to, for someone to have a adequate standard of living. And we get a little bit into what cultural relativism is, but we'll talk far more about that in, in a coming module. The Beetham article is dealing specifically with economic and social rights. And when in the previous lectures, I talked about this being a concern um, or the top priority for many of the former communist states as well as for some developing states. So Beetham is going to discuss um, the uniqueness of economic and social rights. Um, are these, what kind of duties are in included in those? What's the role of government? And then I ask you in the reading questions whether or not Beetham agrees regarding the distinction between positive and negative rights. So be sure to, to um, focus in on that. Now Beetham is going to refer to Shu, who, Henry Shu, who is the author of the Basic Rights um, article. So you should compare those two arguments side by side. And then, you know, Beetham... Uh, cite you and what's required to make a human rights effective and there are three things so be sure and, and note those um, and, and basically ultimately Beetham makes an argument about who's responsible for the needy should a particular state be unable to fulfill that obligation so uh, be sure to be able to answer that question Henry Shu is a well-cited uh, 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 scholar of human rights who really focuses in on these the idea of basic rights. So according to Shu, what are basic rights? And again, he is going to define security rights and subsistence rights. So you start to see these typologies really play out in the literature on human rights, where people focus in on one type of right or the other. Um, what does Shu mean by security and subsistence rights as inherent necessities? And then kind of think about, I didn't ask this, but kind of think about, where would Donnelly fall in on this argument that Shu has? Then the last article by Jer uh, Jeremy Shestack um, is focusing on the philosophical foundations of human rights. And this really is in line with the second two lectures that I posted about the religious sources of human rights and then the political sources of human rights. 
And I'm sorry, it's Jerome Shustak. And he, he goes into these categories as well. So his first source of human rights, he talks about religion. And so you're going to want to read what he says about um, religion um, and, and the influence of, of religion on human rights and compared to what was provided in the lecture. And then he also talks about natural law, which I focused in on. Remember the, the writings of John Locke, for example. And this is a theory that's most closely associated with the modern human rights, um, this idea of natural law. Okay. Um, what is positivism? All right, this is, this is outlined in, uh, on, on page 23, and, uh, an excerpt on page 23. <clears throat> and this is basically um, kind of the rule of law. The source of human rights is found in the system of law with it. So kind of think of it as a legalistic approach. Right? He also includes um, a discussion very briefly of Marx. And so I talked a little bit about that in the third lecture, so you want to compare those. Um, and then uh, there's a utilitarianism argument on page 25 that is, that is proffered by Jeremy Bentham. So you'd, you'd want to be able to define that. So go through the reading questions uh, as you read. That should help you kind of um, outline um, the uh, information in the chapter and compare that to what I lectured on and in the PDF handouts. And you should start to see a picture of what human rights are, how they're defined, how through time the idea of human rights evolved. It could argued that you could be you could argue that there's a kind of a constructivist element to the theory of human rights as well as obviously a liberal theory of human rights. And when you go back to the initial international relations theories, um, there's also some Marxist views on on human rights as well. All right. Well, that will wrap up. Module 1, be sure and do the um, discussion board. There's a time limit imposed on that. And if you choose to do this writing response um, opportunity, be cognizant of the due date. You have until the following Friday to finish that up.